Hello guys. Today's uh, lecture will be on the limits and variables of metamorphism. I hope you all have understood the fundamentals of metamorphism. So we are just going once more through this. It is metamorphism is nothing but a solid state recrystallization of a rock in presence of changing pressure and temperature, which is an isochemical change. The variables of our the uh, agents of meta main agents of metamorphism are temperature and pressure well, while talking about the temperature the temperature can be from either from the inside of the earth or from radioactive decay or from the temperature which is formed as a result of geothermal gradient that is the way that there is an increase in temperature as we goes down the air so it may be due to either of the these three and the pressure is, of course will be from either from an overburden pressure or from an external source something like a tectonic force the next agent will be chemically active fluids and more in most probable cases there will not be any addition or the subtraction from the bulk chemistry but the fluids which is present inside the rock will act as a agent for the metamorphism to happen so we will discuss that, those topics in the last part of this lecture the first agent of metamorphism will be the temperature if the temperature is one of the most dominant metamorphic agent which causes the metamorphism to happen it can range from around 100 to 150 degrees centigrade to around 9900 sorry 900 degrees celsius that is it can range from a diagenesis level to a anatectic melting level it can start from a sedimentary a sedimentary formation of the sedimentary rock up to the limit where the rock will melt in that particular temperature so it can range from 150 a diagenesis temperature to a temperature of anatectic melting the particularly the low temperature uh, metamorphism are known as low grade metamorphism and the high temperature metamorphism are known as high temperature metamorphism we will be discussing those type of metamorphism in the next video where we will be discussing about the types of metamorphism so as you can see in the figure that there occur an increase in temperature due to the order as we goes inside there this temperature will be either due to a pressure induced temperature due to the weight of the order or it can also be the temperature that is that we occur from the inside of the earth or it can be due to the radioactive decay in either cases as we go down the temperature of the air increases with the depth so that also the grade of the metamorphism also increases with depth at a smaller depth where the temperature is in the range of 100 degrees celsius the types of metamorphism will be low grade when we reach up to some something level down so that the, tem the temperature reaches around 500 degrees celsius so the metamorphism will be a medium medium grade metamorphism so once we deep deep into the earth we will get a high temperature or a high grade metamorphic the next factor will be the pressure as we have discussed in our earlier video that there can be two types of pressure a uniform pressure or a directed pressure Direct pressure is nothing but the pressure will be exerted primarily through only one direction or there will be a major direction for a pressure consider a body of a body of rock is experiencing the pressure through the axis x y z in case of uniform pressure the pressure exerted to x and y and z direction will be equal but in case of direct pressure any one of the axis will be having higher pressure than these two so they there occur unequal pressure so there are characteristic rock which is uh, depending on the pressure types of pressure or the direction of pressure and with the direction of pressure or whether it is a uniform pressure or a direct pressure the product of metamorphism varies so according to the pressure the texture of the rock varies so when we take a closer examination on the rocks we can identify the pressure regime under which the rock has been formed as i have said in the earlier video the pressure from the orbit or the lithostatic pressure will be an uniform pressure and we consider or we assume that the lithostatic pressure is uniform in all directions so we are considering our lithostatic pressure as a uniform pressure while in case of direct pressure the pressure is exerted from some other activity say like an uh, tectonic tectonic setting the uniform pressure will increase with the 
increasing depth but the direct pressure will increase up to a limit after that it is not dependent or directly uh, dependent on the depth factor and the uniform pressure will be acting vertically downwards and it affects both solids and the liquids and it is it is safely assumed that the pressure will be acting uniformly perpendicular and perpendicular to the rock and the direct pressure will act in all the direction and it only affect the solids resulting in the deformation of shape and mineralogy and the uniform pressure is always associated with the high temperature since they are both are from the lithostatic pressure there is a geothermal gradient so that the depth is also a factor in the case of uniform pressure but i have said earlier the direct pressure are associated with the tectonic force so they may or may not be associated with high temperature an example for an uniform pressure is a lithostatic pressure it is a pressure due to the weight of the ore burden but in case of direct pressure it is a stress due to a tectonic deformation or tectonic force let's take an example of a rock which is experiencing a first a uniform pressure and then the next case a direct pressure the result will be entirely different so in the first case it's a granite and the second case it's a granite gneiss as you can see when the mineral are experiencing pressure from all the direction the mineral tends to be formed as a spherical or a rounded form but if the pressure is directed from a particular direction the mineral tends to align perpendicular to that major stress direction so that the rocks appears to be foliated or the rocks the minerals in the rocks appear to be aligned in a particular direction and always the alignment of these minerals will be perpendicular to the major pressure direction 